This summer, in partnership with our colleges and universities, uh, we introduced, the health department uh, introduced guidance for reopening of Ohio's colleges and universities in a safer way. Uh, right now, our colleges and universities have test processing partners. In other words, they are partnering with a lab, a hospital, um, and they have plans in place that they have implemented. So what we're going to be announcing in, in a moment uh, is an expansion uh, of that, that protocol. And some of the colleges and universities are already doing what we are now uh, recommending, uh, strongly recommending everybody do. Again, let's look, take a look, and this is kind of random. Um, we've got a lot of colleges out there that are testing, but let me just, we're going to pick a few here because we've talked about them in the past. Uh, a couple of them, we've seen a lot of cases, and I want to give you an update. Uh, at the beginning of the semester, the University of Dayton tested all 9,000 incoming students. And they, out of that group, they had a positivity of 1.2, pretty much what you might expect. Um, after the kids came back to campus, we saw some outbreaks, and the school has worked tirelessly to limit that. Uh, last week, the positivity rate was down. It had been way up from there. It was down to 2.2, uh, and they're continue to work to drive it lower and think it's going to go lower. So good work to the University of Dayton. Uh, at the end of August at Miami University, the positivity rate was over 5%, uh, and they were averaging 100 new positive cases a day. Uh, this, this week, as they start back in in person, um, and I just maybe explain that, um, a lot of the kids were already back physically. They just had not moved into the dorms or they had not, they were in residential housing that's outside the university. So this week, Miami starts back, uh, last week, uh, they were moving into residence dorms last week, as I recall. Um, and this week, the same level of testing, uh, their positivity rates have gone from 5% uh, down to 1%. And so under 1%, they're averaging less than 20 new cases today. Uh, they are testing students who live on and off campus and are casting a wide net on testing those who live in congregate settings where someone has tested positive. Uh, so we, again, congratulate uh, the officials uh, at Miami uh, University. Uh, one of our smaller schools, uh, College of Worcester, uh, they are predominantly uh, residential. Uh, when students arrived on campus, seven of their uh, 1,588 students were positive. Uh, that's a low positivity rate of 0.4, uh, less than 1%. Uh, the college is working with the Wayne County Health Department advi and advisors from the Wexner Medical Center and focusing on prevention and screening. This past week, they tested 13% of their on-campus students, and they have a positivity rate uh, after having come back still uh, at one half of 1%. Uh, so this is uh, very, very good news, not much change at all. Uh, Ohio State, uh, at the beginning of September, the positivity rate was nearly 6%, and the school was averaging 150 positive tests each day. This week, with the same level of testing, they're finding, finding uh, a positivity rate around 2%. So from six to two, they're averaging less than 70 new cases each day. Uh, Testing has allowed them to isolate positive cases, effectively conduct contact tracing, and reduce the spread. So again, let me just say those are just some schools that we had talked about in the past. I wanted to give you an update on them. We have other schools that are doing testing um, and doing a very, very good job. So let me, let me talk uh, a little bit more about what our changes in guidance is. Uh, while some schools are already doing this, today we're announcing a recommendation that all our residential colleges and universities uh, ensure that they're regularly testing a sample population of their students. So in other words, we want to make sure that they are testing students who do not have symptoms. So a random sample of their students. Uh, we're leaving it up to them uh, as to what population uh, to test. Uh, every week, uh, but we recommend at a minimum a minimum three three percent uh, screening uh, students who do not have symptoms really gives college presidents uh, and their team a real look at what's happening on their campus. Uh, campuses don't exist in a bubble. Uh, every single one of our 
campuses, uh, most of them at least, are, are close to a, a, a population uh, center, some small villages and some cities, uh, but they, students go back and forth, they do intermingle, and so they are part of, of a community. Um, it's important that we continue to know uh, and that the universities continue to know what is going on uh, on their campuses. And it's important for them to know what's going on with their students who don't live on, on campus. And so uh, this is our recommendation. We're going to put a more formal guidance out uh, in the next several days. Uh, so again, our expectation is each campus uh, will plan to screen at least 3% of their at risk uh, of their at 3% of their population uh, and to do that uh, every, every week. Again, work with the local health department. What they're finding will dictate how much testing that, that they have to do. Um, we look forward to continuing to work with our colleges and universities uh, as, we, as we move forward. 